Hey, welcome back. This is Professor Mark Leone with the Drawing Database. And today we've got a long pose uh, with our model here, Brevin, the lovely Brevin, and I love this uh, particular pose. You can see the materials I've got out, charcoal, uh, pencils, sticks, erasers, and chamois, um, and a nitrum uh, uh, sharpener pad or a sandpaper pad, which I love, by the way. And um, we're going to work today in additive subtractive drawing. So we do this a lot at, at school and NKU here. I like to break the charcoal stick in half to put the chamois tone down or the uh, charcoal tone down. So here I'm taking <clears throat> white piece of drawing paper, just regular old sketch paper. And we'll take the side of that stick and do a nice broad stroke there, get a nice quite a bit of good uh, charcoal material on there and then we'll start to uh, chamois that down. You don't want you don't want it to be too dark and you don't want it to be too light at least for these be these beginner sort of long uh, academic uh, long poses here. And so <clears throat> I get a nice, you know, richness on there, but notice my sh the chamois <clears throat> is fairly dark already. It's pretty dirty and you want to keep it dirty. You never want to really clean clean that chamois. So now I can take the chamois, which is the more proper pronunciation, we just call it chamois, um, and I'm just uh, smoothing that material out nice and you know relatively clean there on the surface of the paper, getting it nice and and uh, uh, rich and smooth. It's about a medium value tone. I'd say it's about a number five or even a four on the on the on our general value scale there so once you get that cleaned up you want to get all the dust particles off of that which does pretty well once you kind of burnish it down you do your kind of wax off wax on there um, your karate kid reference and then sometimes I like to take a little brush and brush it off I'm not sure if I do it here I'm not sure what I'm doing because I'm looking at my shoes down there I suppose um, so I'm, I'm going to get under the board here and get a few things. There's my old trusted brush that I get. I'm going to brush that off. That's what I'm doing. And just take the extra, the excess there and get that off and clean a little extra smudge there. Don't worry about it being, you know, perfect. Um, it's supposed to be a drawing and it's going to look a little, uh, you know, differentiated, which is fine. Um, there's, and later on you'll learn that you can do different toning values or only tone down a certain amount of uh, part of the, the drawing too uh, if you want. So uh, I chose this pose today. I want to talk a little bit before I come back on camera. Um, and it, it's a little stark in terms of the value contrast, but what I, it means that it doesn't have a rich coarse shadow area. So it's a little bit more difficult, but I really loved uh, the pose. I thought the pose was uh, with our photo shoots, with our three models that we just uh, photographed in December, Brevin, and Steven and Oksana, I thought this was one of my all-time favorites. It really harkens back to a, a Rubens uh, drawing that I couldn't name it, but I remember it. And I love the overarching curvature of that and then the foot uh, coming out and the hands over that wall. And she was a trooper for holding that and then doing that in different positions, which was really just uh, van fantastic. So thank you, Brevin, for that. All right, let's get started drawing. So we're going to start with the gesture here, lay in, and gesture and composition uh, using all the the known attributes that we want to use with our, our gesture. And she's, you know, just lovely there, the buttock in, in about lower area. I'm going to push her up just a little bit. And feeling that gesture from the, the pit of the back there, the sacrum, over to flowing from uh, bottom left to right and then up to the hand. And you know this this can take various different stages. If you don't like what you what you have, you can you can tone that back down. Remember, the chamois becomes the uh, eraser, and the your erasers become drawing with with the light. So we'll do that too, and then we'll add a little white chalk at the end. So my feeling thinking on this is uh, in the back of the. A video or four or five photo, photo images of this pose but blown up in, in certain areas where you can use that. Go back before you get started uh, following along with me go back and, and, and screen capture those and then print those out or put those in another place on your on your computer wherever you're using 
so that you can reference those as you're working. I'm not going to change the scale. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try not to do that anymore. And here's why: as I'm drawing, is that when you're working with the live model, you're not going to be able to bump up the scale. For instance, if you wanted to go close up to the top hand. Um, uh, which was hard for me to reach, so I had to turn my paper upside down. You're not going to be able to go up to the model and say, hey, can I get about one foot in front of you? That's just not going to work. Or, hey, can I get a close-up of your buttock? That's just, <laughs> you, you see the, the difficulties of that. So the more that you can get one, you know, relative image where you're about six or to ten uh, feet away from the model, that's going to give you more of a... Uh, what it feels like to be there live. I know some of you can't get in front of the live models for whatever cultural reason or your age or just whatnot, my money, etc. So just keep that in mind. But I do put some more close-up shots back at the end of the uh, video just to contradict exactly what I just said. But um, I won't do that. So I'm starting gest gesturing here um, as I'm moving through the lima bean up to the leg. And you'll find that I'm going to make the head a little smallish for what I want. And also her left foot that comes gracefully back there that keeps that curve alive a little too big. And I'll correct those um, when I make my first kind of editing cut. And you'll see me change, you'll see me change those. Um, so just keep that in mind. You want to make the head a little bit bigger than I do. And also that back foot a little smaller. I like making the feet and hands a little bigger than... I normally, what normally you would see, I just learned that, 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 that gives it a nice kind of um, importance to the appendages at times when they don't, they can be too small. That's just me. That's also some learning from the Baroque in the uh, late Renaissance as well, Rubens and Tintoretto and others, and that's something I think about. There's a beautiful diagonal relationship that's going on between her back, her shoulders, then the buttock and down to her lower right hand there that I'm starting to emphasize as well as I, I place that. This is a tough, uh, tougher drawing to uh, locate compositionally. And so take some great pains. If you, if you don't quite get it the first time, that's okay. Keep on, keep on trucking with it. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do. So thinking of the shoulder blade here, <clears throat> the center line is the spine, which is pushed over to the left there. <clears throat> and we're coming down to grab the bottom of the buttock. We have already see that diagonal line that gives me the movement across the image picture plane. And it will come through downward and over. Give her roundness through those glutes. You keep these gestures pretty light, pretty simple. Generally, I try to keep these long poses to about three hours. You're going to see how much quicker we can get. You can start to render and get more finished in a three-hour study. Um, then you can, in this pose, because of charcoal additive subtracted, then you could say in what I did with Oksana uh, a couple of weeks back with uh, the wax pencil. So uh, wax pencil is just more laborious. So just keep, keep that in mind as you're, as you're working through. I think that's important. We do like to use charcoal at NKU quite a bit, but not exclusively. Well, I'll be doing about somewhere between eight and 10 long studies now that we've got our models uh, all copyrighted for us and our own models. And so we can move away from Croquis Cafe, which I, I still recommend highly. Use them as a student especially, please do. Uh, we just had to make an institutional choice that, that we would use and, and pay and, and hire our own models, and I'm glad we glad we decided to do that. But they are they're a wonderful group, husband and wife team, and I, I highly recommend that you you use them as, as students as well. So having the arm come down, seeing the leg, the right leg come far up, her knee is hidden behind her shoulder. There's a little part that peeks over. I mark it right there. It's a little dot, just to remind myself that hey, that's that's that knee, the ending of the the knee where it's bent there and you don't get much of the calf or lower leg on the right side because it's hidden by the bulk of the the buttock and the, the leg there and you get the just a touch bit of the tendon of the ankle and then the foot coming down believe, uh, below. There you get that nice angle from the buttock down to her arm. Really is a lovely uh, pose. <clears throat> And we'll come down and grab that hand. Nice foreshortened hand for you to work with, I know. 
You can hate me later. I get it. <laughs> it's not too bad. It's not as foreshortened. Since we're above it, some would get some elongation. The the index and the, the rest of the smaller fingers are more foreshortened. So look, the, the palm, you it's coming down a little bit, so it's slightly a box. You can get the thumb as a gesture. The rest of the finger is just a broad gesture, a kind of a linear broad stroke of the pencil coming through. Then we're getting the split of the buttock to where the end of the sacrum, the coccygeal region is. And coming out of the buttock, catching that graceful gluteus maximus there. That's, that's uh, under stress and stretch. That uh, foot there is really anchoring that, that pose. We had her, she didn't have, she wasn't grabbing the wall. We said, go ahead and reach out and use that wall as support. And it gave us, once we saw that, we thought we got to get that, like hold that as long as you can so we can get multiples of that. Now the center of the spine there is up through the erector spinae muscles are grouping on both sides, so it's a trough. The rhythm catches over through the spine to the back of the head and curves on through there. And so that's important to keep on coming around that curve. To get to catch to catch her around that that uh, top of the head where the the uh, two-toned uh, hair with the pigtail is and back, which is a lovely kind of nice contrast to that. Getting the outer boundary of the head, just getting the the profile line there, nothing special. That's a difficult head to draw. This is a, this is a dip, more difficult pose for sure. Hairline curving over, which is consistent with the brow line and the bottom of the nose. So everything we see is an underturned curve because we're above her and, and uh, my, my uh, colleague took the photos. He's about 6'2". I'm all of 5'6", so I was, I was pushing the button. We had a little system going. Took it off the tripod there. Brow line where the nose comes out of it, curved back over. We see that brow. A little bit of the cheek separation. And then we'll get the nostril coming down, pointed slightly downward. Tip of the cartilage on the tip there and then downward. And that's all you need for now. You're going to see me wipe that head out because I needed to change it later because I drew it a little bit too small for her body size. It's a little too big in the camera because we get a little bit of distortion with that camera lens. And so that's why I thought, let me, let me minimize that. And I minimized it a little too much. So we'll just, we'll just watch this light and you can see, you know, we all make mistakes. And, and I do. So you want to just analyze them and then change them when you when you can. I think that's important to to recognize recognize what's going on there as well. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. And again, you know, working in additive subtractive charcoal is very much forgiving. Um, it is di more difficult to control. I get a lot of emails about controlling the pencil, and I'll try to do a little to, uh, instructional video. I don't like calling them tutorials that's not as serious as instructional videos about how I'm holding the pencil and how I can get a broad stroke and a thin stroke in one movement um, it is hard to control in the beginning it was for me when I was a student I was frustrated and I would do a lot of practices holding it in the palm method which is a traditional academic renaissance drafting method but then I would do other works for finish when I was a student in the pen holding method because I had more control. But then um, over the years, I became more comfortable with that. And if the more you allow yourself to hold the pencil, just like I'm having it now, the charcoal pencil, the stick, you'll develop that. But it is an awkward feeling, but you've got to go through it. I don't, I don't know of any other fast track to that. There's no real secret. There's no tricks to drawing. Everything I'm showing you in the drawing database is time honored. It's a more academic approach. Um, and it's only just an academic approach. Um, it's something that you can feed off of for more expressive things that quite frankly you'll want to do, but it's a good place to start with, with your drawing approach. So that's kind of the, the whole feeling on the, the handling of the, of the pencil. You know, I can use a broad stroke, I can move it forwards and up and down and make a mark. And so you're not just limited to just downward strokes. I can go up, I can go down. And you need to just practice on pieces of paper and just make marks all day, all day. Just make marks with it. And, and so that way you're relaxed and not worried about making some perfect image. Make abstract marks all day, lines, etc. So I'll have to do a video on that. So I make her foot a little bit bigger to anchor her bottom 
area of, of the drawing a little further. I like to do that. The foot can get lost. Other artists don't. If you look at Pontormo, uh, uh, Jean-Antoine Watteau, one of my favorite uh, uh, draftsmen and probably my favorite artist of the Rococo uh, stylings of the uh, 18th century. He, he would make hands and feet, especially feet, a little bit non, almost non, um, non noticeable, but it, it makes it makes females especially more petite, and so that's probably something that had something to do with that. But I, I like to make them a little bit larger. Uh, Lucian Freud did that with his paintings, and it gives it a certain kind of bulkiness uh, as well. So getting the gesture of the foot, then getting the width a little bit, feeling the curvature of the foreshortening of that calf. The axis is tilted top left to right. You see the bulkiness of that. That's important to get that. And then coming on out, and then you'll see me make this foot uh, just incredibly too, uh, too long, which is fine. Um, I like that rhythm uh, that was going, but it was just a little too long there. So. Uh, I'll correct that uh, once we get to the, the first cut that I make. So if you've ever made any videos, you know you know you've got the camera on and um, and you can cut and and sometimes I have to refresh the the computer screen when I forget to do that, so that's annoying. But you can say, "Oops, okay, I need to go back. I'll take a look at the drawing since I'm drawing in a little awkward position, just to work the camera so the camera is straight. Uh, uh, vertical looking straight down at 90 degrees so my drawing paper has to be straight down normally and I've talked about this before in other long poses but you want to keep that perpendicular at 90 so that means the paper stays flat which is a little awkward when you want to reach higher uh, higher up so Bring over to the foreshortened calf here. It's a lovely pose. So we've got a great degree of difficulty. We've got a lot of movement. We don't have a lot of shadow shape to work with, so she's uh, a little bit front lit. I'm going to keep her a little darker too. Now these are changes you can make. Remember, we're not doing hyper hyper realism, uh, uh, taking all the marks away and smoothing things out, and making it a photograph. If you're interested in that, there's probably other people on YouTube that you want to look at. Well, we, we study the Renaissance and the Baroque um, to get flow and movement and rhythm and gesture and it is a drawing and painting painter's world technique and it's not a photo reel kind of kind of thing so I think there's plenty of that. And you could spend 50 hours doing that kind of thing. I just don't don't find the value of it for now. You need lots of repetition. Then when you feel like that's a style that you use for you then you can investigate that. The progenitor of that, if you want to look at art historical figures, and I need to do a, a, a video on that, 15 minutes would be with Richard Estes, E-S-T-E-S, -E American photo realist who started that movement back in the early 60s. So you can see I've got the footprint of the, the foot going. It's a little large. I want to keep this video going to show you how it's too large so you can see that and you could judge it too and be aware, be, be mindful and, and aware of it. Don't worry about making those mistakes. Correct them. Worry about correcting them. And, um, and some things you just live with, some things you change, some things you draw out of your head. And I've got a recent video we made about um, drawing from the imagination using gesture and quick contour that so you'll be surprised with enough time that you can do really well crafted uh, uh, drawings out of your out of your head and they look they look believable and real and adding value and texture and all that good stuff is, is quite um, quite a doable technique a, a great artist to look at that would be uh, Malay French French Barbizon painter school use these these techniques here. So you can see that see how that foot's long. See where the toe is against the ankle. It's just a little bit too long. It's in a good position. I kind of liked I like the way it flowed, and I might have kept it maybe uh, if when I I sized made the the head bigger. But I just felt like it was it was going to bother 
maybe bother you guys because the toe needs to be about even with the index fingers on the uh, hand to the other side. And I thought that was a little too much ad libbing. I like to ad lib. Um, some I've got a, I feel a few comments on on YouTube that they they they'll make comments about well that's not really accurate and <laughs> the point's not to be photo uh, measuring accurate. Uh, it's to it's to draw well and use value, volume, and gesture, and you can ad lib if you know what you're doing. And so I get some comments like that, and sometimes I'll make I'll make you know discussion points, and at, at some point I'll just say, well, you know, just good luck to you. Um, but if you're way out of whack and you don't want that, you need to correct that and change that for sure. Uh, so working with this foot, I love the graceful quality. Look how she's on the the what we call the ball of the foot or the foot pads. Really stabilized by the grabbers of the big, the uh, the smaller toes. The big toe is is relatively irrelevant here. It's the small toe, the pinky, to the uh, the index toe, if you will, that really grab and hold on uh, to that. There's a lot of weight distributed on that little surface area, and it's holding up nicely with the hand on the ground, and then for balancing uh, on the wall. But the the foot that I'm drawing now and the hand on the ground really do the bulk of the, of the work. So there's this beautiful diagonal. See how we get we're her going forward with the, the two feet um, diagonaling back towards her forehead. It's really a lovely, a lovely position there that she uh, found herself in. We'll have our models take poses and then we'll, we'll, and then we'll direct them some and then sometimes we'll see things and we'll have them just like automatically stop for a second, hold that and we'll grab that as well. If you, we could not video our, we, the contract that we wrote with our attorneys at NKU, we could not allow videoing. I highly suggest if you are making reference photos for yourself and your models, if that's okay, is to actually run a video camera or your cell phone and have them move while you're posing and you, and you can always freeze frame those and get wonderful shots in between shots that you never thought you would get that you necessarily won't get with a camera. We just, we couldn't do that. We would have liked to have done that, but um, we would have, we, we just decided that if the video got in the wrong hands, that could be manipulated. So we wanted to make sure we protect our models. Foreshortening deltoid or shoulder here, lots of overlapping from that crease that you see underneath where I'm drawing and then right as it curves to the lower uh, arm to the elbow. There's a lot of overlap increasing that you need to get even in this shoulder, the trapezius right there. There's your overlap. Go back and look at that foreshortening videos on that simple cylinders turn and foreshorten up, and you just get the overlap to overlap to overlap and you're good to go there. Coming down the bottom of the sacrum right in through there where it starts to split apart, the little dark divot area where that ends and you're, she's coming across with the lower rectus spinae, a little bit of the lat there actually comes all the way down. Just kind of grab that. Sometimes I'll just, I'll see something in my mind or my eye and I'll go back down to it. Elbow there, elbow joint, the condyle of the tibia fibula there as it connects to the humerus and getting the ball of the uh, uh, flexors and extensors. This hand is a difficult hand to draw. I'm going to gesture it here and then I'm going to leave it for later and um, I'm going to shorthand it here and then I'm going to turn my paper upside down later on so that I can get to it uh, cleanly. I'm really stretch. I'm standing here and I'm stretching over this this drawing board and it's not very comfortable and I'm pretty I'm still I'm in 51 but I'm still in, in pretty damn good shape and it still hurts my back a little bit. And so I kind of leave it like that. We'll get to it later. So here we have the deltoid trapezius, a little bit of the scapula, rhomboid area, and it comes up just a touch more to her head. And then we get the, the wonderful movement of the spine. Look up moves the center and twists her neck. So her shoulders are twisted as well as her neck twisted too. That makes her real nice. A nice pose there, but it is a divot. Now curving over, getting the rib cage area to start to pop into the oblique where it contracts and you get those folds of flesh and skin where that contracts. So we see the uh, expansion on the left side of her back on the edge and then we see the contraction now on the right side of her back where this is folding in through there. So that's a complex area of folds. And then it, we have a cast shadow 
on the leg a little bit, which is a little harder edge and a little bit darker as we get lower down to the uh, part of her hip too as well. So working through, that leg gets buried back behind that arm. Keep that, keep that construction work light. Sometimes I'll use my hand to wipe something away, kind of like a chamois or chamois eraser too as well. By the way, I'll put a timestamp on this uh, video. Happy, uh, happy New Year to everyone across the globe. I hope that you're all safe and healthy and you haven't contracted COVID. And if you did, you're okay and that uh, you're well. Uh, it is January 1st of 2021. And I hope for the world that we have a uh, much more uh, healthy year all over from the far, far east all the way over to the west coast of the U.S. and all to, to Hawaii as well. So I hope that um, you're able to get a vaccine uh, soon, relatively soon, as it gets distributed and uh, have a, a healthy, productive uh, 2021. Little, little pocket of skin there before we get the brachioradialis where that elbow joint is and that little part to the right where that little muscle there, there is. And then right there that kind of helps to bridge the bicep area to the, the extensors and flexors of the uh, forearm as well. There's that elbow joint pops out just a little bit. She's coming on down there. And then we get a little bit of that cast shadow. Yeah, this, this image doesn't have, this pose did not have where, where she's photographed. Uh, doesn't get the grand, beautiful, uh, lit, kind of half light, half shadow with that core shadow bridging the two. Uh, and it, that makes it a little bit e easier. So that makes this pose even doubly kind of, kind of hard. Uh, unfortunately, but this is a little bit more more advanced in, in terms of that. Don't forget there's a little breast showing through where it pulls off the pectoral there. Just right under her armpit, that's actually the breast. It gets hidden just a little in between the leg and the shoulder. It's pulled way over. She's stretching over. We can't emphasize enough how far over she is. She's uh, being stretched. And we'll clean up down here the shoulder, excuse me, the elbow region. And then we'll grab the lovely fingers here. Cylinders, think about cylinders in different directions. Overlap of the thumb going in a different direction there. <clears throat> Get the end of the block of the palm region, and those fingers come out of that and they overlap. Remember to leave gaps in between each finger. Take a look at your own fingers. There's gaps or spaces between your fingers and your toes. We're not made. We're not flippers. We're not dolphins. We don't have flippers, and um, or mermaids. We have space in between both the fingers and also the toes. So make sure that when you're drawing fingers and hands, or excuse me, hands and in feet and you draw those digits that you get space in between. That's not easy to do. So we've got some overlapping there and I'm shorthanding here because you want to, it's a little bit more impressionistic. We don't want to overstructure the hand to the point where it becomes so, so solid. That's a little stylistic thing too as well. So if you're doing, if you're doing a hyper real drawing where you're spending, you know, this 30 hours on this thing, you, you, you you'll, you'll clear that up later, but we, we're not going to be doing that. And, in terms of video, about three or four hours for a study for a video, unless it's it's broken up by lots of different aspects, it's gonna gonna be tough for everybody. <clears throat> so working those two fingers together. There are the middle the middle fingers. And then have that pinky come out and it gets overlapped a little bit by the by the cloth there. We'll abbreviate some of that cloth too as well. Uh, we, won't, we don't need to draw every single um, 
wrinkle or fold for this particular study. It's more about the finger, or the figure, excuse me, and the fingers, I suppose, but it's more about the figure for sure. Just feeling that soft feeling of the, the gesture of the models, forms in the middle, the, the back, erector spinae, the scapular are not well, you know, they're very front lit, so they're soft transitions in that back. That could be very difficult to, to get a hold of. We're going to clean up the space a little bit here. So we don't have a lot left until uh, we're ready to block in with uh, our eraser to begin separating uh, the light here. I'll fill in the head a little bit with some tone there and we'll get richer and darker as we come through. I don't want to get too too deep into value at this stage. We'll keep it more general but we do want to get some separation going and I'm going to change that head. We can see now that, that we've got things located that head's a little too small and that foot's a little too uh, long there. So we want to make sure that we get those a little, little bit more accurate. You can add a little bit, a little bit. I think the head is, but since it's coming at us, it starts to get a little bit uh, altered in perspective, and um, it gets a little too big, in my opinion, for what we would normally see. So I, 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 I did want to control that, but I, I reduced that size a little more than, than what I wanted. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna increase that size and then decrease the foot. As we finish our block, and I'm gonna get a little bit of some of the folding here. Uh, to set the rhythm of the composition in the background too. And you'll see I'll go and just add a few things, uh, detail things out as I, I start to do that as well. I'll kind of jump around a little bit and clean up some things. Clean that up down there. Just by a stronger outside line, contour line. Figure out some folding here. I'll look for some of the main folds around the figure. I'm not interested in drawing all of that, all the minutia. Uh, if you're interested in drapery and folding uh, cloth drawings, I've got a video on that in the basics section. Put her in a little shadow. See how it moves the composition that way, so I emphasize that one quite a bit. You know, we're with that little knee popping out. And that moves the composition forward, keeps that diagonal going underneath her chin there. And then we'll, we'll bury that in the shadow that it needs. It has there, right in through there a little further. And kind of moves here, kind of pushes that knee forward a little bit. It comes down, you see the little cast shadow on the on the wall of of uh, drapery. I think that's actually bed spread spreads that we bought. Some sheets. My colleague bought that. He's featured in a video of interviews that I did. I don't do those as much anymore. Not as many people watch those, so I thought, well, I'm not gonna burn my time. But he's Kevin Minty. He is in one of those. So one of the first ones I did give give uh, due, due diligence to my own uh, close colleague there. I'm going to feel that calcaneus bone come around kind of a little box. We get a little underneath of the, uh, the uh, foot there. We'll feel some of the main thrusts of the rhythm. I look When I do this, I look for what's going to move around rhythmically, but also those dark patterns. And so that big, larger fold in the fold underneath but where her thigh is there, and that secondary one to the right of it, and then those two longer curves that come down that kind of start to connect to the one under her forearm that makes a, a cast shadow on the wall there that helps too, for sure. And we get those lovely folds of the oblique and upper lat area that are under a lot of stress. Be hard to hold my breath here. I had time to bend down. The older you get, those of you that are young at young at heart, you know what I mean. I'm a skier, so I, now we're getting into ski season. We have a little, we have a little a ski resort here in in the uh, southern Ohio region, 
And then the, the point of this, every time I've been down to put on my ski boots and have to wrestle with them and lock all the straps in, I'm like, ugh, it's just like, it stresses, puts that stress on the oblique. And she's going through that here, but she handles it quite lovely. So just getting a feel of that, that movement across the hand to the folds there, getting some of the basic folds between that foot uh, and the other hand there. There's two kind of cool folds that are like little uh, linear kind of lozenges, a little space in between there. Get that one through. Just anything that can move the, the drawing around a little bit and give us enough of, of movement to work that. So I'm going to work this foot a little bit, but then take that all out, unfortunately. The back there is uh, the foot under uh, uh, to the left of it. It's got some cast shadowing there. You can simplify all that, so we, we put the focus on the figure rather than, again, the folding. So there's a hierarchy, and we make a drawing that is a drawing and not a copy of a photograph. Um, you know, we there's a lot of talk about you know using live models, which I think are great. Um, I would, if I had my my real way at school, I would use a photo. I would use images and master studies first, and then go to live model fairly quick too. And use a little bit of both, and I highly suggest that. That's how we artists trained in the Renaissance, in the Baroque, and in the uh, neoclassical period, Romantic period, etc., and so on, by using the Louvre and the Prado and other Italian museums to look at art and look at drawings and draw from those drawings as well. So now we're ready to block in. So let's start talking about blocking in with light and using our kneaded eraser. So I'm just taking a smaller, that gummy little eraser there. You can kind of see one to the side there and just turning it over to the side and, or, or using the, the mono eraser here. And you can see my nice lovely bald head going. I have an Einstein look I'm starting to get to, but that's a different idea. <clears throat> uh -huh. But uh, just basically getting the light pattern, those fingers. I'll turn this drawing upside down later and work on the hand so I can really get to it. Here I'm stretching across. That's why my, my, my head is in the way. But just want to get the light pattern on that. Basically get the, get the feeling of that hand coming across. But the kneaded eraser, the little gummy eraser down there to the side. I'll uh, start lifting off the charcoal off of the paper with it and that's drawing now with the light that's not erasing um, my eraser for correction that I would use I would use the chamois of that with the case now I give my stroking pattern for these more academic drawings uh, to mimic the the feeling of coming across the form um, <clears throat> and so that helps to give the keep the rhythm alive in, in all the body part areas I'm drinking a little hot chocolate here if you hear me sipping a little bit. So <clears throat> that will help to uh, begin to get more of the um, light off of or illuminate the model and get the charcoal off of there. So I, you know, I tear those, those kneaded erasers up into smaller little bits. It's very painterly. Uh, it's like painting with a broad brush. <clears throat> And then I'll go back and I'll start to work the shadow tone and then you'll see me work with the kind of a cross contour line that I like to do on academic drawings. I'll do some more academic drawings in different materials and I'll do something else where, where I, instead of doing the cross contour, I'll do a stump uh, approach where you take the, <clears throat> the paper stump and it's a blending stump and you can smooth and blend and that's a different look that a lot of artists like to use. In, antiqu in antiquity too as well. I don't I don't prefer it as much, <clears throat> but but uh, I'm not really drawing for my own style here. None of this none of this work that I do on the drawing database is a, is what I would call a just distinctive kind of style. As it is more of an academic, just a basic approach to all of it, from the figure to uh, the basics to perspective. That's what the art history and drawing videos are for to start to investigate. When you get really confident, um, what do you want to do with yourself and what do you want to do with your work and, and think a little bit less in style, but in terms of ideas and the, your natural stylistic approach will start to emerge. You know, there's a big difference between Van Gogh and let's say Tintoretto or Michelangelo, quite a bit. 
They were artists of different means, different times, different skill sets, and their work looks at different countries <clears throat> or different regions of the world. So they, and it looks that, it looks that way. And there's reasons why, but it's not, we don't, I don't necessarily consciously talk about style with this, the drawing database. It's about good crafted, you know, basic foundational drawing that you want to accomplish. It's easy when you're learning to get seduced by style and start to copy that. Um, you can see that come out in my gestures. Uh, when I, I copy my master uh, mentor, if you will, Matt, I don't like that idea, master, but uh, Perry Carmine a little bit, I've talked about that earlier. <clears throat> Getting the middle of the back there, the erector spinae, they hump over. They're long cords that start from the sacrum and come all the way to stabilize the spine and really end up at the back of the base of the skull, the occipital region, I believe. <clears throat> and so I'm finding that line, and you know, she's bathed in light all over, but what I'm really looking for are where some of those lightest values, and I can work from, from them there out. Notice I'm not blisteringly taking out the light. I'm going to keep her a little bit darker so I can make the illumination on her back a little bit more pronounced at the end. So there's a, a little change that I'm making. I kind of hesitated by pick, picking this image. I thought it was a little difficult because of that, because it's not such a half and half, half lit, half shadow, but I think you guys can handle it. So just scraping the kneaded eraser across. And it gets dirty after a while. Once you use the kneaded eraser, you'll feel it get dirty, meaning that it gets a lot of charcoal on it. And I just take it, if I pause for a second and go off the camera, I'm pulling it apart and it cleans it out. It spreads all that charcoal dust out and it kind of eats it up. And then you can come back and, and um, get it cleaner <clears throat> by doing that. And, and you can take off more intense light quickly that way. I also like to stamp out it. You'll see me stamp later on where I dab at it and dab and, and press and press. And what that does is, is it um, uh, takes off the charcoal softly and that doesn't blend it around or s smooth it around a little bit. <clears throat> when you get to delicate parts of your drawing, you'll, you'll understand that a little bit further. That's, that's going to be important. Stroking, stroking technique, what I mean by that, it's painterly. As you're erasing or you're, excuse me, drawing with the light, think about movement. Every mark that you make on your drawing, whether you're drawing gesture or you're drawing tonal value, darker value or lighter value, you need to think about what is this doing to push the rhythm and the movement of my image um, around and I'm constantly thinking about this little little mind game that you play little arrows in your mind which way to go see how I'm working across the sacral area across the buttock I'm thinking about curving and around curving you can see the pattern of my hand but it also follows the cross contouring of the rhythm of the figure to move that move our eye along across the buttock to the back and get us up to the spine and then eventually lead us up to the head and into the arm and, and, and so on. So keep keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> and you can emphasize that with cross contour line. Unless you're doing it for some other particular reason. Or you, or you don't want to do it for a particular reason as well. Most of the charcoal I'm using for this drawing is soft, extra soft charcoal pencil. That can be a little hard to control too. You can use a medium and then a soft for your darker values. I find that the very hard charcoal pencil is a little too hard to control uh, linearly uh, because it's just there's so much clay added into that it becomes difficult to to um, to get a darker mark. But some some artists do uh, work with it quite well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So moving on here, working the scapula area. 
you can see part of the lower scapula where I move my fingers there. It's softly uh, coming down the scapula to get that, that little shadow there. And then back over. It's little bumps and humps. That you, the more you know about anatomy, the more you can control them. Just because you know anatomy, anatomy doesn't help if, if you don't draw well. So drawing well and knowing less anatomy is more important than not drawing very well and knowing a lot about anatomy. Think of it. If, you're, if a doctor picked up, he's never drawn before, but knows quite a bit about anatomy, then picks up pencils and draw, that's not going to work out well. So it's the drawing that comes first. It's the simple forms that come first. How to light them, that, that's the bigger idea. Moving them around, and then if you know more anatomy, that's, that's certainly going to be a plus. <clears throat> cleaning up my needed eraser to move around the models forms getting a very generic look for now Getting her hand or arm across, overlapping that leg. <clears throat> that little space in between the elbow joint there, the little brachioradialis between that bicep and the tricep area to help connect the two. It's in the bulge of the right part of the forearm and up to the side of the bicep there. <clears throat> Top of the hand, you can see where the elbow, excuse me, the, the uh, wrist there bends and the, the hands come towards, towards us and we're looking on top there. <clears throat> you can use smaller erasers, smaller spaces, smaller erasers, bigger spaces, bigger erasers. Getting the calcaneus region, the Achilles there, bone. <clears throat> tendon there we'll get there across the ankle the uh, fibularis brevis little tendon that comes across and then down to the fifth metatarsal on the on the pinky area in the middle of the foot there just following the light pattern nothing really special just taking off thinking about light dark a couple of values system of values that's all nothing nothing grand If you think very simply and systematically about a drawing, it can go really well and easy for you over time. You see, when you get, uh, get to thinking too complex, you, it can get in trouble with, uh, for you. And I had you know, bad habits of doing that when I was a student. It took a while to get out of that. We nor as students, we see, I certainly did, we see detail. Uh, before we start to see the, the simple form. And the, and the reason why you train with your mentors and are taught well, if you're hopefully taught well, is to simplify all that, break that down into in stages and segments so that you can see it in its own proper time, which makes better sense.
curving around the calf. Just feeling the soft lot pattern, I'll wind up making it darker. Pushing it back a little bit more in shadow. <clears throat> you can do that on models. You can always alter, especially if they're really front lit, lit like, the, like Brevin is here. We can darken her a little bit to push that contrast some. So I'm going to work that foot a little bit. <clears throat> but I'll wind up erasing it. So let's, we'll cut that. How about that? Or not? I guess we'll leave it. Let's just leave it. Then I'll come back and you can see that's too, too long there. Sometimes you think you have a good idea and then you'll feel like, well, that was just too long. I like the elongation, but it was just a little, little too long. Feeling that, that uh, grounding cloth and the cast shadow that accompanies it a little to the top. You can see where it's darker there. It has the cast shadow from it. You'll see me blend a little bit with my finger. You can do that. Work that tone and blend it around. Sometimes I'll use a paper towel, a piece of paper. Sometimes the chamois is a little too reductive and it takes more off because it acts as an eraser and a blender, but sometimes it blends too harshly. And you can use a paper towel or your finger. <clears throat> Or if you're really flexible, your toes. You know, Daniel Day Lewis, my left foot kind of thing. Probably you're gonna use your finger a bit. Alright, so it looks like I've got that block in. Now we look at that and say, okay, that head's a little smallish. And that foot's a little large. So <clears throat> I'm gonna block in a little bit more of the looks like the background a little bit. No, I know the major areas that need to be be altered. Not too bad. In some of some of the line around the background cloth area. <clears throat> Keeping it very simple, mostly of just a light and dark kind of patterning. I'm trying to think very, very clearly, very cleanly. And we 
get the movement of the cloth coming up beyond her head, overlapped and in, in above her head a little bit through there. Pretty simple stuff, just keeping it very simple, just looking for the lightest areas of the cloth, emphasizing that which I've already got down in terms of the movement of the, of the dark patterning there. <clears throat> you know, what kind of, what anchors this pose a little bit, not only the rhythm, but two, two areas, the shadows under the head, then the cast shadow behind the head, from the, from the head region, and then the uh, shadow underneath her buttock region from, from heel to heel, heel there, and that rhythm and rhythm of that folding helps tremendously to, to uh, anchor her down, give her a little, little bit of shadow balance since so we don't have a, a, a major light and dark relationship going on in the figure. Again, she's so front lit. <clears throat> Just feeling that stretch across, that rhythm from that toe over, and I'll change that foot. That's about where that foot should end, where that starts, not where the big toe is. So we're going to make adjust that foot. Come back on the back. That's a nice area to contrast a little bit of the arching back with a little bit of shadow to help move that image along. Just moving the rhythm of the shadow pattern by racing around them now to get them illuminated a little bit more. <clears throat> Always want to give some environment generally for your figures in, in poses so they'll feel feel like they're concretely there. So I come over to the side a little bit to to reach reach easier that which I can draw there. Get that big big pattern just excavating some of that charcoal out. <clears throat> of course the darker you have the charcoal the more you're gonna get. Alright so now I switched over you can see where I adjusted the head made that larger and then I'm gonna uh, I, I realized I should probably show you some of that but uh, I drew the head before I, I um, was able to, to think about that. So I you see me chamois out the foot there. So you can see the foot uh, toned away. Just take the chamois and wipe that down and you can see the head. I enlarged the head some and got that more natural looking and then um, toned, toned the head back in the top of the head where the, where the hair, obviously the hair is, and then pulled that foot away so we can get a much, much better read on the, the foot here. And now we pop over there to grab that foot and reduce the size of that. It was just too much. You can see kind of the ghosting of it underneath and where I adjust it to. And then we get the foot pattern, the bottom of the foot pattern there. <clears throat> and it's more like a footprint in the sand to make sure we emphasize the pads of the foot. You can tell they're more calloused and a little, a little bit more colored and, and uh, you obviously orangey or reddish kind of color that with balls of her feet, patting of her feet. And then we'll get the feeling of those toes, triangular in nature, and it's the big toe 
wants to anchor that foot and then point up or back into the cloth and then the big the smaller toes want to come out and then start to uh, lean into each other as they lean back into the big toe. So now we're ready to start toning. So we're ready to start blo uh, uh, blocking more in shadow and in, in emphasizing further there. So I've got my uh, extra soft charcoal pen. So notice how I hold it to the side, but I'm holding it now differently. I've got it more at the top, holding it a little bit more like a conductor so I can get more of this, the uh, broad stroking patterning onto the surface of that uh, area that I'm rendering. So it made a big difference changing the head and changing the foot. Now we're really in much, much better uh, harmony proportion wise. And so I'm softly, gently laying down charcoal on top of the drawing I made. I'll come back and catch edges, overlap that area, that lat area from her arm, catch her contouring at the elbow round. <clears throat> and start to pull that back in tone. Sometimes I'll soften up with a touch with the finger to soften up something I hit there just very quickly. If it's a bigger, broader area, I'll probably I'll probably hit it with a uh, paper towel. Catch that bending of that shoulder where the scapula, clavicle come together in the trapezius. It's got a little extra dark curve there as it turns away from us. Get that area nice and foreshortened and overlapped. <clears throat> So I'm going to make those shadows a little darker than what they are so I can emphasize a little bit more definition in the back. <clears throat> the director spinae, that strong cord muscle there comes over and as it curves around up there, that's the rib cage, and down here we're getting into the glute and a little bit of the lat that comes all the way down. The oblique too as well, believe it or not. So that lat comes down further and wider than you think a little bit. And then catching that pelvic edge, edge of the leg there. We'll take a little charcoal stick now. And be careful if you're using charcoal stick. Don't overuse it if you're not used to using it, especially in smaller drawings. I like to have my students ease into that. But they, they, they cover a nice broader area so I can get the cloth of the curtain fold there working for me a little better. <clears throat> Darkening underneath the back of the thigh there as it comes up to the glute, to the buttock, very softly. So thinking about controlling the striking pattern or the rhythmic uh, mark making pattern, very softly. Glute, the split there between the glutes up to the coccygeal sacral region. A little slight dark in there, cast shadow. Just to separate that glute over. Slight cast shadow. You catch that a little strong, little extra fold there, not a whole lot. <clears throat> Now 
And then we're turning around the thigh there. You can see the rhythm of that cylinder tube. Soften that over if you need. <clears throat> See how I stamp around? I'm taking that kneaded eraser and stamping that a little bit. It means I just tap it on the surface to take out some of the material without blending it around. I can smear it if I'm not careful when I don't want it to. But it goes over and overlaps the, the back of the thigh a little bit in that view. bit of that fold on the back of the cloth there coming around the back of the thigh and the calf as they come together it turns over there's a little space between it's not a cavity so much as it's, it's a little bit but it's also cast shadow too but if there's still that little fleshy part of the out inner medial part of the knee there so it's not Completely dark, right? There, we'll catch it back over as it overlaps. <clears throat> I probably could have tilted that over just a little bit, leaned it over to the right, but it's close enough to not really matter. Around the calf. sculpting or, or contouring, if you will, around the back of the calf, back of the thigh, turning that. See those opposite curves? The thigh has an undercut and the calf has an overturn or overcut, if you will. Just taking and running around that thigh, this calf, thigh and calf. It's a difficult part of the drawing. We get a foreshortened calf and foreshortened soleus coming down to the ankle. You'll see me turn different directions to the side if I need, just to get the best approach to mark making. Since I really can't turn the image that much, it's too much of a hassle. I'll have to turn my body. And turning it over here to the light, light is lighter area. And right in through there, we see a tendon here, and then the darker areas of tendon coming down and then we see on right underneath it is the, the ankle the lateral malleolus or the lateral part of the ankle of the leg there and then of course the outside of the foot a little bit of shadow on the ground slight cast shadow so here we have the, the ball the calcaneus region 
of that heel and we're coming around the edge for the toes pads a little bit underneath the ball of the foot it's more in shadow small toe there he's located but more of a crevasse in that foot we come down the arch and get a little bit more in shadow and if you need to clean it up a little bit like I do take that as your eraser And catch that heel a little stronger. Catch the back of that back of that leg. It's going to rest now, resting about on the big toe and the knuckle of that big toe on the ground. So it's raised up a little bit. You can see that and the reason we know that is a cast shadow directly underneath the uh, right side there of the, of the foot. <clears throat> Taking into that turn of the big toe there. So it's pushed down the ground, resting on the ground strongly to help balance that right side of the body. You can feel that curvature, that pad of that toe. Very triangular. Catch a little bit of light for now and that little turn above it for now. See how it starts to turn that foot. That's not a, not a hard foot to draw, really. It seems like it is. The calf is a lot harder with all of its foreshortening. A little contouring around. I'll basically just turn the tool a little bit, a little bit higher so that the tip will hit the, hit the surface to get that cross contouring. And I'll take the chamois and erase out those toes where I need to make it clear. Notice I didn't use the eraser. The eraser is for light drawing and the chamois is for taking off or actually erasing. So get the gesture of that toe and then get the underturn of the pad of the, the uh, distal part of the toe tarsals there, I believe. I've got pads. Basically, they're all little rectangular rounded forms. They start to turn in on one another and point towards the big toe. Just get this to work really hard to get them separated. I'll say this is that when you're using the palm method to get really tight, delicate detail, it's really difficult. Um, and uh, the only time I'll take off the palm method is when I really need a tight area, then I'll go back to a writing style. More like scribing. I almost did there, but I still feel like it was comfortable there. And stroking through to get the rest of that separate that foot from the ankle a little bit. So I'm 
feeling good about where I've got the foot now. I'll go back and add some highlights a little bit later. Some of the digits at the toes. <clears throat> Clean up that side a bit, get that shape a little bit better where that pad is. Like a little sausagey area with the foot starting to kind of come in on itself just a little bit. Just pop a little bit of the kneaded eraser on those tip pads just to get a little bit of light coming off. Just a touch of light. They're basically like little spheres, little planes, boxes. Push that side of the leg a little bit to the left with a little bit of value there. Catch those folds a little bit now, catch them back over, reconstitute those, get those a little bit squared up, or get those a little bit clearer, catch the edge of that heel, separate that down. You're just working constantly to reevaluate and get cleaner and clearer as you're making your next pass or what could be just about a final pass of this particular study. Get some of that lighter cast shadow in there. It's not too heavy because light's getting back in. Reflected back in there a little bit. Catching that cross contouring to really turn around those forms. Cross it over, crossing the form over, working, working across the form. Not the length of the form, but the width of the form, crossing and, and getting the width. Now getting under buttock here on the right glute, coming across the form, working that contour line, now starting the stroking pattern of shadow, pulling into that oblique area to where it's really bulging and popping into the pelvis, the upper part of the crest of the pelvis. Like little half cylinders, sausagey forms, deep crevasses that cut in on the right bottom side. Okay, fill in that cast shadow now on the leg. It's not super dark, it's closer to the left, that one bulge, but it's not completely blisteringly dark. There's light in there, so you have to be careful. So we see the little bit of the under the underside of the breast form as it attaches to the pectoral. So you have a little bit of a curve of that breast form. So we'll catch that a little bit fuller. You can see my little hat there, dog hair all over it. 
little Jack Russell we have. <clears throat> there we go. So we catch that underneath breast and we'll, we'll clean that up a little bit. <clears throat> Pushing that leg back, back in shadow. It's just slightly darker than what's in front to the to the glute. That's why this drawing is a little bit harder because it's super sensitive to, or subtle, super subtle and sensitive to the light. It's not a very stark, easier to read drawing. Bring that form around. Turn, turn, turn. Turning around. So that stroking pattern, I put my body in a position where I could more naturally, rhythmically work around that form. A very soft, a tighter approach. But it's not stumped. Stump can get even tighter. Start to work around the erector spinae like little tubes that they are. Strong, we call them the strong cords for a reason. They're like corded tubes that attach to the either side of the spinous area, spinal area attached to the rib cage. And work on the way up and down. <clears throat> Just cleaning up the glute area a little bit, taking some light off a little, kind of balance in between. Uh, light and dark a little bit. You'll go back and re-edit and re-correct or re-change as you as per needed. It's very very common. <clears throat> Taking a little bit more of that light out so I can keep working around the figure. <clears throat> So moving across that glute again. And I would say, you know, this is about a, almost a three hour drawing and that's still relatively fast for, there's ateliers that work weeks on a drawing or months depending on the size and the complexity or the, the clarity of the finish that you, that you want. We just can't, I'm not gonna run a 20 hour video. That's not, that's gonna put everybody in a coma. But the Russian academies, um, they still have some uh, academies that, that have that sort of thing that work a little bit larger and even, even more detailed you can look at. New Masters Academy has a guy that, that's doing that. He works pretty well. That's a nice technique. The only thing I don't like is that their gestures are so stiff. They get a little bit more sight size and measuring type, more angularity, and they tend to be a little stiffer. But they're, they're, they wind up at a, at a nice place, I think, for academic drawing. But I, I question a little bit of the stiffness that they have. Um, I'm going to show an artist soon in the Art History and Drawing series that I love, that is a, a strong German realist uh, in the 19th century. Um, and still one of the best pure draftsmen, I think, of all time. His name is Adolf Menzel, and I think you'll find his work to be particularly if you love a, a kind of heightened, uh, when I say realism, the real sense of the word, 
of, of uh, accuracy and ac uh, realistic looking, but with a more loose approach that just a gorge, has a gorgeous approach. That was very, very popular and very famous in the 19th century and for the most part self-taught, self which is a particular uh, genius to that too as well. He even gained quite a bit of accolades even from Degas, which is a big honor. So cleaning up this foot now as it comes over, turns over here to the undertoe of the foot. I love that separation between the pad there and then the, the curvature of the heel or the pad of the foot's a lovely curve. So that foot splits right where that dart sits on the ground. Not there, but on the other side. And then there's, you see that pinkish tone. That's more the side of, or the beginning of the lateral foot pad. And then, it, and then that dark uh, spot signifies the sp center split. That foot's doing a lot of work. So we're about halfway through the drawing. We've still got quite a bit to go to finish, but about an hour and a half into the work. down the tendon there, recapturing that fibularis brevis tendon. Little spot there, cleaning that up. We take a nice strong pass of this foot now. Push that egg-like form of the top of the ball of the foot there, those cuboid bones for the most part, into shadow now with that tarsal region on the outside or part of it covered now. Push that back in nice shadow to really clean that up. Very really simple tone there, nothing special. It reads pretty nicely. Getting the top of the heel and the calcaneus region or the Achilles, Achilles top put together and then we'll take care of those toes. We'll shorten those up a little bit and we'll find that big toe a little bit more strong as we go through here. <clears throat> Refresh the screen just a touch. So you can see how the bottom of the drawing, but at the feet, a little bit in the left leg, have a more finished feel than the rest of the figure. As so you can see where we're kind of going with it, it gets, it gets refined. The top part of the figure looks a little bit raw, kind of unrefined, a little bleached out. That's because of the light. So there's the big toe pointed up, the tarsal there. Getting the rhythm of that, and then all that gets buried in shadow. There's no need to go into serious detail there. It's just to put it all into shadow, to clean it up, simplify it. Take some of those extra lines out with the chamois there. Getting a fold coming over. <clears throat> T 
taking off a little bit just to get a little light through there again to clean that up sometimes you have to race and bring out the light sometimes you draw up the dark whatever the balance is there's no particular rhyme or reason it's just whatever starts to what you need to be to be uh, flexible to that <clears throat> Take the side of the foot, bottom of the foot there, separate that over. Lighten that back up a little bit. <clears throat> I think the one thing about, one of the things about working from imagery rather than the live model is that you get these super res, high res photos and you just, you kind of compare that all the time and you, there's these subtleties that get edited out when you draw from the live model just for the sake of time. And we don't need every single detail, every single follicle of hair or, or fold. Um, we want to interpret as well, but keep it within whatever particular aspect or theme that you want, if it's impressionism or realism of some sort. <clears throat> These folds, get, you have to be careful not to get them too, too symmetrical. I'll go back and clean that out, that area where the rib cage, where the oblique gets squashed and then and push that into the dark further. Go back and take the kneaded eraser and start to clean that out and be 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 as be more mindful of the shape of each one of those those folds a little bit. So you go see I go back and it's like okay let me clean that out and get really super super clear with what I want to do there. Uh, the 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 um, the less experienced artist or student, if you will, will begin to make those more all symmetrical or they look all the same but they're not they're so they're different shapes and scales and sizes and they've got slightly different light things going on so you have to be careful of that we tend to see uh the complexity of asymmetry of form and our our mind wants to to make it symmetrical and we we have to be we have to fight that human tendency to make things symmetrical or stand them straight up and down or put them completely horizontal because it's just it's quite frankly it's easier to read so you have to be careful there <clears throat> so that's the back of the leg or excuse me the top of the leg and with cast shadow that we have the breast in front of that so we have the arm then we have the breast in between on the side of the oblique since she's leaning quite far, it's the far uh, right side of her right breast that's leaning against the arm a little bit. It would be quite probably squeezed in between her leg and her arm quite a bit, almost smushed a little bit. That'd be very uncomfortable. <clears throat> she didn't hold it for too long, luckily, but we, we did hold it longer than probably we wanted her to. But she, she moved around a little bit. She was great. Big, big big trooper we're glad to work with her we look forward to working with her in class when we get back on campus <clears throat> so we're getting in there and getting getting that a little bit clear and more accurate to what's actually there. That's a fun, one of the more fun areas. That's a dramatic area where you get that squeezing and the compression in contraction against that oblique. So again, the oblique in the flashy area, you know, Brevin's not a heavy model by any stretch of the imagination. So even, even thinner models, thinner models get that because the skin is elastic. So she's expanding on the left and contracting on the right. So the rib cage and the, is uh, bending down that twelfth rib on the right side is crashing into the oblique muscle and also the fleshier parts of the fat that's there uh, quite heavily so that skin is going to fold and we get those cylindrical sausagey kinds of forms and that's why you get that <clears throat> that's because the rib cage can bend but it can also torque 
And you notice I also can bend left to right like here, but also front and back, which makes it a particularly fascinating region that was explored quite well in the Baroque with contrapposto, Tintoretto, Tiepolo, Titian, the three T's. I think Titian was more of a, a Renaissance. Caravaggio, Ru, uh, Rubens especially, Rembrandt. I would say Rembrandt and Tintoretto, the movement that they could get through a figure was, in, invented figures was uh, fascinating. So uh, Harry Carmian, my, my mentor too as well. So taking some great pains through here to work that through. It takes some, take some time. That cast shadow will soften it up a little bit. Contour a little bit. See how I can, that's really using a very tip to side. See how I can get that little incised cut line just to turn, help me turn that model. I, lo I like doing that personally. Um, I won't do that in every long pose drawing because I want to show you slightly different, more academic approaches. I don't want to get into just one particular style because I'm, I'm not personally an academic artist, but I'm borrowing, kind of keeping it stylus for, uh, for uh, educational effect. What this does, it helps see the spine move down to the sacrum and then move over to the glute, to the oblique. It's like a, just a strong flow. And then the top of the rib cage comes down the right side and moves, moves over to where these folds are. And then everything points to her shoulder, her breast, which actually comes back up to the nose and to the face, which is where we want. And then being careful to get these little underfolds where they separate from one another, these little lines. We don't want to cut them too hard. They're not that harsh. You have to be careful. I think I make mine, one of mine over dramatic a little bit later and I had to tone it back a little bit. But it's starting to work out now underneath here where it gets a little richer and gets a little darker there. So we get that underfold and a little bit more coming on top. It's where that pectoral region, the lat, the deltoid of the shoulder, and in this case, the squashed breast comes over too. <clears throat> so that feels pretty good in through there in terms of what I've got drawn. She's much more realized there in the drawing. Now I'm going to over, come over to the deltoid and start to tone down the cascading shadow on the shoulder as it turns into the shadow there. And then on the other side, just a little darker so it turns, push that breast back a little bit. <clears throat> Cutting across with a cross contour across that glute to move the eye around. You don't want to make it too dark, it's just a little extra technique on top. Just to move the eye. I like, I personally like doing that. And it's a very academic approach. I've seen artists be looser with it and some be just super exact with it. I like using that quite a bit. <clears throat> Getting that left side of that build, uh, that uh, trapezius, excuse me, the tricep there to turn a little bit along with the shadow on that leg. Just a little soften that area and then separate with a little cut in line. Especially where the overlap, you need a strong, you need a strong linear approach there. 
a linear definition to help. Work the undercut of that scapula. As it is a divot in there, and the muscle fills in that region, it still creates a little bit of a divot. <clears throat> soften that up, very soft in through there. That could be a challenge in charcoal if you're not used to it. Keep your tool long, the lead long, so you can turn it to the side and just barely scrape it across the paper. Just barely scrape it. You know, some artists like to use super, super long leads. I'm somewhere in between because I have a heavier touch for academic academic drawing, and some don't. You'll find your, your natural feel, but you're going to have to experiment with that over time. <clears throat> Back of the scapula there in shadow. Going about a step or two darker for for a little bit more contrast. <clears throat> because if she's so, so front lit, lit by the light in the frontal part of her figure all over. the needed eraser, lightening up where I need to on that leg. Catch that cast shadow a little bit, can reconstitute that a little bit. Bring up that little part of the knee, catch it right. Do you see it in the image? Right there. You don't have to include that, but it's cool that's there. I love the fact that it's stinking, just barely sneaking over and saying, Hi, I'm here. So now I'm catching the cast shadow on that wall to, to keep that energy of the leg direction going. I see them as a value and I see them as just a shape, curvy, linear working my way down, trying to get the value more correct in the composition rather than trying to get every fold or details. No need for that. It's not a hyper-real drawing. It's going to be a little bit darker, so this will get me up to beginning to work on the head a little bit. Clean out that edge back. See, I can just wispy, just wispily take that back, so I can clean out that nose a little bit and the brow. We don't see the eye; we just see the brow coming through, just a slight part of the back of the or the cheek to the eye there. And it curves, it gets us all the way up to the top of that curve of the, the head there. That lends me good feeling to where I can start to really come over this head now. Put that a little bit more in shadow as it turns over to turn her back to the right.
Feel the rhythm of the, the flow upward, pulling upward to that head region up here. <clears throat> my finger just smooth that out even on the head I'm about to come on top of that soon to really refine that further Top of that shoulder, top of the trapezius there, <clears throat> pushing it around the rhythm of that, turning it. Clearing up that lower bicep. I like to integrate the, the shadow there on the right into the background shadow to make it smooth and transitional. And you can blend, you can just run your tool over that to both and they, they blend together nicely. Working over the brachial radialis in here, that muscle between the bicep and the forearms and work both a little bit turning over turning 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 like a tube there now time for the forearm working down <clears throat> So stronger dark on the right side than the left. We're lit, lit up to the left. And so that, that uh, wrist region is really folded as the, the arm changes direction there, where that cut is on the, the wrist. And then we, we have a little bit of space there, a little extra fold till we get to the thenar region of the top and bottom of the palm. This is, we have the top part clean that up a little bit. Now we can clean this up and really get into that area of the hand further. You can feel those nice little zigzags of the fold. So I'm look, just looking at the shadow pattern and I'm going to fill that shadow pattern in first and I can get the lighter part of it later there to the foot over just approximating that. <laughs> Curving over to the fold there, get back to the toe region. It's pushing that cloth, nice stretch across there. Those are the ones, uh, the ones I'm drawing are the ones I want to more emphasize for compositional movement and force rather than draw everything exact. Doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, so it looks like I self-edited there. So we're ready to move on now to the head. Now I've got a charcoal stick in my hand and that will help me with that rich dark. It's that, that head looks super dark, but I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. We want to get a little bit more light in there. 
to give a little bit more detail. So be careful, it's not a flat dark. So it's a little bit lighter on that left forehead region. We want to emphasize the skull of that form. <clears throat> and I can use that charcoal stick to take on some of the cast shadow there on the wall nicely to emphasize her shoulder region. I can use the edges of those sticks to get the line and the fat part to get the, the tone, the quick broad tone. It takes a little dexterity there, a little practice, it's okay. Pushing up, emphasizing that upward thrust of the curvature to the composition and getting a soft little little flow. You can go faster with the stick, but it's a little harder to control those smaller areas. You have to be a little careful. Emphasize that run around. <clears throat> Now back to this, the uh, saw extra soft charcoal pencil. So that neck comes up to the trapezius to run into the back of the neck there, the skull occipital region. I'll start to cross contour as I'm getting, once I start cross contouring more thoroughly than I'm, I'm, I'm telling myself I've got the values that I want. Some cross contouring across that arm to emphasize the tube quality of it, of the form itself. It's a very light touch I'm giving. Coming back to the ear, I'm going to find that little, little part of the, the shadow shape inside the ear, the ear canal there in the cavity and the turn of the ear. Really close in there. Then I'll, I'll clean it up with the eraser in a little bit. That helix region. Emphasizing the turn across her, her hairline and that beautiful, some of those curves of the hair that she gets overlapping as she put her hair up in a bun for us. <clears throat> and fleshing out that dark underneath to show her head off against the the background folds of the drapery. And a little bit of the cheekbone as it, as it gravity pulls the cheekbone downward. We get a fuller cheek that way. And the brow, eyebrow covering over. Just a little skipping across there. I'll add some light there a little bit later on. Cross contouring across the back and over to emphasize movement and rhythm and form turn.
even in the shadow div it will cross contour that up and over to can be consistent notice how I switched my grip from a very strong controlled one to the conductor grip now back to a semi control with the I'm using the incise line going from low to high cross contouring around the edge it gives that again a nice feeling of movement and rhythm through there <clears throat> Cross contouring on the ob oblique to the erector spinae. Cross that tube. It's not flat. Across, across the tube. Not with it so much. I've got a little light line for the highlight. I'll do that, and then I'll I'll put a contour, cross contour on top of it. But we want to go across the form. The width emphasize the movement. <clears throat> the spine gets us the movement up. And so we want to get a secondary movement underneath. So emphasize those folds a little bit, rolls of folds. Excuse me. Now I've got the Japanese mono eraser. I'm going to start to detail the head out of here. This is where it gets fun. We're going to open up that hair part between the side there and the, and the, uh, the lower uh, area of the hair. Okay, clean into that ear too as well. We're going to clean all that out. I'm just looking for light and dark shadow pattern. Two values, a lighter value and a darker value. Don't think too, it's, the head is so small, it's about the size of the inside of the palm of my hand. There's not a lot of area for finite detail with, this, with the kind of technique that we're working. <clears throat> so you see I can start to, to dig that out or emerge that more fully now with the, 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 the eraser, the tip of the, the nostril, the tip of the nose there, so I can clean that up, get her to emerge. side plane of the nose underneath the nose there where the brow before the brow covers that and overlaps it forehead you notice the stroking pattern turning turning around just like the back Same thing with the head. Following some of the lighter areas and getting that pattern to move. Now we'll come to the back to the bun part of the hair here. <clears throat> Where the hair comes up into a ponytail to wrap through. We want the rhythm over every single follicle. Value, we get the value, we get the erasing, and then we want the rhythm. I want that to work for us. So we got a pretty good wrap going on there. Or hair, hair, hair up in a bun, hair wrapped up in a bun, or wrap if you will. <clears throat> I 
And so we're drawing with the mono eraser, defining through light the shadow areas too as we get her likeness closer to what we want or what I want out of this study. shoulder. Cross contour across the upper part of the trapezius there. <clears throat> There's a little light coming through the that crease from the deltoid to the trapezius to the back of the scapula toward the clavicle. We get close to, close to the clavicle that comes up to meet the humerus. And so we can pick apart that light a little bit by stroking pattern there. And it keeps a cross contour and it starts to lighten up too as well. A little bit different than using the, the soft, gummy, kneaded eraser. You can see my Einstein hair coming on now. I used to have hair, folks. I used to have hair. At least on the top. I've got a pretty pretty thick head of hair on those sides. <laughs> it's hilarious. I kind of giggle at myself. I guess you have to laugh, especially this year, 2020. Okay, back to planet Earth. So we'll cross contour. Looks, looks like I was... Cross cross, turning around on that shoulder. There's a little reflected light on the uh, edge of that shoulder. I'll catch a little bit of it. Right in through there, just a touch past the core shadow, which is where it's a little, see where it's a little darker. That's the core shadow. So I'll just just take that that out just a bit. <clears throat> and I'll clean up the edge. Cross contouring the back of the shoulder <clears throat> in the forearm. Then across the lower upper, and then we'll move to the spot there. We'll bring back that knee just a little bit, bring it out. Say, boop, there you are. Make sure we get the edge around it. We'll clean it up. So there it is. It sticks out just a little bit. Just that little 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 part makes a difference. And that little divot there with the elbow and that muscle brachial radialis across it. Cross contour. Over and over. Very light pressure, just losing the tip, the side of the tip actually, not just the very tip tip, but the side of the tip to kind of, sort of like a cutting line, just cutting it across. So that gives it a little bit more purpose. And that's, that's kind of a stylistic thing. You can see that background now folding, how it gives a movement, a rhythm. Curvy, linear approach to capture the back of the head. And we'll go a little bit darker back there too, a little bit later. I'm going to lighten up underneath the buttock here. We're getting closer to what I wanted. We're about 50 minutes left for refinement. Run into here, it could start to lighten up, separate. There's a little bit more reflected light in there. It's not quite so light, so I'll clear out that just a little bit.
that nice fold pulling movement. I'm going to leave that hand up above an arm for the, a little bit later. We'll get to it. We're going to get to that other hand too as well. We're just still going to add some white chalk a little bit later too. Promise we'll get there. Clear out that shadow pattern a little bit further by defining what's around it, kind of a Y shape sort of. And it lifts her off the ground a little bit, gives her a little separation from the, the flooring, if you will, to the pelvic floor region or, or pelvic region. Cutting around, refining that. <clears throat> Put a little shadow there. It's not on there, but I want to turn that arm further on both sides a little bit so it doesn't look flat. All right, let's go for that hand now, shall we? So we get in there, that foreshortened hand. <clears throat> Working the top of that hand, mostly in slight shadow, following the shadow pattern, coming over to the thumb. We've got the structure mostly there. We're going to clean that up and get the feeling of it, a little bit refined gesture of it. It's not the main focus. The main focal point's the head and the back and the buttock. <clears throat> thumb tilted over a little bit at the medial. There, phalange, I believe. And then we get the fold pattern. It's all part of the hand system, if you will. Turning that over in that shadow side, you can see the little stroke for the light. Keeping it simple there. And we're working over to the side there. Come back to the hand. Kind of see it all together there. <clears throat> getting the top those big those big condyles of the fingers the knuckle area are pronounced in this view even in a very slight thin woman those knuckles come together different condyles in different directions as they meet up they make a pretty pronounced oval kind of ball that, that works into a tube, which makes the, the bulginess of the, of the knuckle. And hopefully I'll get there in a moment if I keep drawing around it. I keep trying to get everything else around it so I can get to the hand. <clears throat> Apologies, we'll work through those folds. And then around the thumb as it makes a cast shadow and then to the right side of the thumb over and around where that cast shadow is so that thumb kind of pressing up against it's a fun little system of folds isn't it Back to the fingers here. Tube, condyle. Condyle is another name for knuckle. Thicker, then thinner, then thick again. We get the uh, medial condyle there. Remember those fingers are separate. There's space in between. You can see that there's a couple that separate by darkness there. We don't want to run them together mostly. And then we get a little bit of that pinky that gets overlapped by the fold there. Right in through there. <clears throat> around that system of that fold as it moves over to the index middle finger. <clears throat> we 
can get that system, that fold where she's engaged with there. We'll get the lighter part of it later. So it helps me get a good feeling of the fingers, which are the harder parts. Condyle tube, ball, tube, ball, foreshortening finger coming down that, slightly pointed down. Don't have a lot of space for detail. That's kind of enough. Get the bottom of the finger where it cuts around. Tube there. And turn over just a little bit. Get the nail. There we go. Point that a little bit that direction. Got to keep it simple there. Sometimes you're thinking more shape than you are form. You're doing a little bit of both, shape and form. It's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. It's hard for me even. Not to brag. It's just hard. It really is hard. So we've got a good feeling for that hand. I like where the hand's at there. <clears throat> We're going to work up the head, cross contour around. Don't want to overdraw those fans. That's just another gestures there, the value patterns there. That's plenty. And we'll take a little. Now get the crevasse of the fold. We want to emphasize the plain change direction from the wrist to the hand because they're changing. The hand's going down and the, the excuse me, the, the arm's going down and, and then the hand is coming towards us. So there's a just distinctive change. <clears throat> Lighten up some of those digits or those knuckles and the bones of those fingers. When you're drawing fingers, you're really drawing bone mostly, so learn the bones of the hand in the thenar and the hyperthenar region of the muscles, basically the under palm of the thumb and the uh, other side, the opposite, and you've got the hand. It's a lot about gesture there for sure. I'm going to put that down, that triangle just to cover my palm so I lighten up this foot a little bit. And that protects my arm and my hand from leaning on all over the drawing and, and potentially smudging it. Get those balls of the toes a little bit, just those flat parts where they touch the ground, just to lighten up some so we can really see them engage with the foot and go a little bit lighter. Get that fold behind that foot there, a little darker to, to uh, kind of give a framing of that foot, if you will. Pop a little bit more contrast on it. Clean up that toe area there. There's a cast shadow, or excuse me, a, a form shadow of the cloth there on the toe. Where it pushes in, we'll clean that up. really get clear about that foot laying down there. Get the feeling of the 
nice C curve, that S C kind of S curve U shape, I suppose. However you want to say it, whichever you wish, that curves over gives a nice flow through there. <clears throat> now I've got my charcoal stick. We're going to start to define these folds a little bit further, work this background a little, little more than what we have now. cross carring during the buttock. So there's a fine tuning stage that we're in. I'm in with this drawing currently. So I may work around a little bit. Carving out the back, cross contouring, giving the eye moving, moving around each form. The bigger idea is diagonal, but the smaller idea of the model's movement is the curvature of the back and then to each of the forms around it. And we'll go horizontal, or excuse me, with the form to get the line on the back. On this, the uh, rector spinae on the upper upper left here. Get into the lat, the teres major minor region, coming over, turning that upper back towards the shoulder, then back into the into the head. Taking that kneaded eraser and I'm, I'm starting to just lighten up little areas subtly. So now we can go deeper into there to get a close up look to get some of the subtleties. And you can see some of the real strong, relatively strong cost, uh, cross contouring that I have in there, this cross, cross contouring stroking, stroking marks. They don't have to be very dark, you just want them to be moving, moving the form across. And so I'm just taking, you see me take the kneaded eraser and just dab at it and stamp it. Clean it out, move it around different, different areas so I can get a nice clean region of it so I can push apart that region. And that lightens up those areas subtly with that without blending it too much and, and, and smearing it and darkening it, darkening it where, I, where I, I, I wouldn't want that. And now back to the, the main item there. <clears throat> So what that does is just gives us some subtle changes. You can see the subtle changes if you look deep in the back enough. Subtly there to make little movements around the scapula region and the shoulder region. And I'll heighten that a little bit with some white chalk a little later. <clears throat> So 
So when you when you do that with a smaller kneaded eraser, there are times when you just feel like okay, it's dirty, and you've got to take a moment to to pull it apart, clean it up, and then dab it again. You can see how I move move it around a little bit to get to a cleaner surface. And the cleaner it is, the more charcoal it takes out. And then when it gets kind of dirty, you have to take it like like I'm doing off camera, just pulling it apart a little bit and putting it back on. Not I mean, putting it all back together so it's clean and you get another nice round of stamping. When I say stamping, it really just lifts off easily. <clears throat> it gives the back more subtle definition, which is what we're after. The subtleties within the back movements. Backs can be very difficult. Get the underside. The far left, as it turns away from us, lightened up a little bit. Obviously, edge control is very important to study like this. Hard edges versus soft edges. Most of the back is soft transitions with some semi-soft semi to slightly harder edges. And of course, the outer boundaries are are harder and there's there's line weight variation. clean up that outer curtain a little bit just so we can clean really clean up that hard edge of the buttock there <clears throat> because we're not going to do a whole lot more with the background we are going to add some add some more darks but I want to add this really clean that out a little bit see how that really tightens up her edge take your brush and brush off that dusty part when you get dusty parts on there just don't don't press down very hard. Just lightly glide it across. If you press it down too hard, you might smear charcoal that you didn't want. Right around this lower knee, we'll clear out that light a little bit. Clean that out. This rib cage back in through that left side, that far left medial part of the, uh, the excuse me, lateral part of the rib cage. Go up a little bit higher and mimic some of the mark making that I've got there. See how that cleans that up a little bit around the side of it. We'll add a little bit more detail to those curtains back there, but that gives her a stronger edge and separation. those folds. Just the impression of those, not particularly too, too dark, just the subtle quality and gives it a little bit more purpose back there. Hit that scapula on the lower, lower part of the scapula. Slightly underneath it on the erector spine, a cylinder tube. And that angle that we're pushing really emphasizes the torquing and turning, leaning us back over to the left, getting us back over to 
the head. All right, so now we're ready for the great flip. So the reason why I did that, and you should be flexible with your drawing, is to be able to reach the uh, upper arm and the hands there in a more comfortable position. On camera, I can't quite get to it without getting too much of my body in the way, and just it's just too difficult to lean into, so turn it upside down. Um, if it was normally drawing for myself, it'd be uh, tilted on some kind of easel or axis point about 45 degrees. Since it's not, and once it's okay, we can turn it upside down. So we'll turn the image that we're drawing upside down. This is also something good to do just to look at your drawing and to see what it looks like from different angles to see how your scale and proportion is working for you. You seem to be holding up pretty well from what we've got. Um, now we're working the shoulder and getting the final arm uh, finished and cleared and complete here. Working the forearm to the uh, brachial radialis region to get that tube across as she's turning that that elbow and bracing that that arm on the surface of the wall there and we'll lighten up this back of the back of the arm a bit. <clears throat> it's it's fun and I think refreshing to see it upside down too, just to see the difference. Forearm is very much an egg shape. I think this is a more difficult hand to draw than the one on the ground um, because it's so front lit that it's really flat and it's splayed out. So we're going to get the gesture of it. I'm going to show you how that is more appropriate than trying to over detail one area that could take away from the focal point. So we want to be careful of that. <clears throat> Also, looking at my drawing, I've got several, I've got about 10 or 12 sheets of newsprint underneath this drawing surface to give it some padding to help out. Catch some of that background here. Two about, two about the forearm, two about the, to the wrist. Got that strong ulnar bump on the right, the bottom right side there. <clears throat> so now we'll figure out the flow of these fingers here. From the wrist over, start to catch that little pad there in between, space in between the thumb. Get the wider part of the thumb there attached very lightly very gesturally well just a just the just the contouring of the gesture I want to keep it secondary to the detail of the of the overall figure get a little bit of shadow on there get the knuckle region around <clears throat> <clears throat> Catch that across the palm, top of the palm. Cross the digit there to the wide part of the thumb, to the knuckle. Basically getting the outer shape, being mindful of the digits there, meaning the condyles, where it's wider and where it's thinner. A little delicate region. Here, I'm 
going for the tip of the finger, feeling the condyle there, and over just a flow of a gesture back to that middle dark and through there. Just another gesture, tip of the finger, where it's a little darker. Kind of looks like fingernail polish, but not, not really there. And then the smaller finger coming out a little wider and obviously shorter, a little darker there at the tip. A little highlight on the thumb, a little light touch on the thumb region, just thinking about tubes and cylinders. A little highlight there. <clears throat> a little bit of that movement definition between the condyles there to separate them out. And I think we just about have what we need there. Tough area. And we'll get some of that folding of the drapery just around that area. Pick up the charcoal stick a little. <clears throat> start to work those back folds of the drapery to emphasize what's behind her little bits and around her head to blend that into the top of the head and softly work that through. outer fold of the around the arm region kind of a loop just to emphasize that we're well on our way we've got about uh, less than less than 20 minutes left of things I want to show So I'm picking up here now, so we're back to normal. I'm picking up a white Carbothello chalk pencil. And that pencil now is uh, uh, very chalky, like a chalk pastel pencil. It gives us some nice highlights. There's, there's not, a, not a ton of bright highlights, but I do, for, for the drawing, I want to lighten up the face a little bit. And it might be, let me, let's go ahead and dig in, if you will. There we go. Now we can get in there and you can just lighten up a little bit, a little slightly beyond what's on the model, but to emphasize a little bit of the focal point of the head. And I'm going to hit a little bit of the back region too, scapula, things of that nature, buttock. Show you that a little bit. We'll pull in tight to see the difference. It's a subtle difference, but it makes a nice difference here in the tip of the bulb of the nose, the cheekbone a little bit. Just to turn her a little bit on the nostril, just a little, barely pushing down. Run it in there. There we go. Go on the tip. So she can lighten up a little bit. And really emphasize the focal point of the, of the head. Work 
that ear, clean up the ear a little bit. And remember you have in the back of this video, you have cl more close-up images of the model. And you can see how that tends to give a little bit more focus to the head, gives a little bit more shape definition. You don't have to get super detailed there. Got my head in the way, sorry there, but I'm getting across, a little bit across to the, the bottom of the cheek there. Tough to see in that angle. It's a good view of my hair though, a little Einstein. I'm getting the back of the wrap, the blondish golden part of the back of the hair there. <clears throat> I'm just trying to emphasize a few areas of light. We don't want to overdo it. Really getting some control down there in the tip of the hold of that, that pencil. Back of that a little bit. There we go. And you can kind of see that clean there. And we'll pull back out so we can see that a little bit better so I'm doing the whole thing uh, with the chalk now just the areas that I need working a little bit more elongated here and then I'll come back and give a little bit more cross contouring on that so to work that long part of the tube, so I've got the contrast bumped up here just to, so you can see it a little bit. So it will pop her out a little bit. <clears throat> and take that paper towel, just a regular old paper towel, piece of paper will do. Soften up that bite a little bit on these edges. It can be a little harsh off of those edges. Take my pencil and work the elongated part of that tube. Doesn't take much, I'm barely pushing down. And the contrast is on a little heavy too, so you can see it off, off of the camera, it's not quite as strong. Softening up on the edge of the glute there. Cross contouring back over that to recapture the movement of that through there and then a little tone to soften that up just to hit that hip a little bit lighter. Work that clavicle some. <laughs> I 
<clears throat> cross contouring, adding some light to that, up to the upper part of the clavicle to the trapezius, just playing, not playing, but just giving value expression to just some of the lighter areas. We don't want to kill it, overkill it with light. We're just adding a little bit more highlight than what's there, just to spruce this up a little bit. It's a little flat. Again, it's so overlit. So I darken the darks a little bit where I need it, and I lighten the lights a little bit to, to emphasize a little bit more form turn. So we had to work a little harder because of it, because of the front lit quality of the drawing. I'm going to take that background too and pop a little light more than we see it to help move the figure along, especially in that darker area I've got in the back that really helps that tremendously brighten up that area with value. Helps us to see that just a little bit further. <clears throat> Turning the shoulder around. <clears throat> I'm going to pull that in top left around that fold a little bit. Move our eye through that. Move it through further. Breast form just a little to pop that out underneath there. Turn that shoulder. Bring out that little area, that brachial radialis between that joint there. That condyle, the radius, you can see that popping out of her elbow. So that twists over twist to her wrist on the right side. <clears throat> Take the charcoal stick now, big broad stick, and add a little bit of value and finish to the what I want in the background. Swing that rhythm around to emphasize the curve around her head further. Get underneath her chin. So at this point in time I'm just tweaking. Tweaking out the drawing. Meaning I'm just adding changes, subtle, subtle manipulations to make it what I, what I hope to feel is a better, a better drawing, better, better vision, clearer, cleaner to look at, uh, or really rendered in a way that will uh, give it a, the cleanest read for what I want in about a, was it two hours and 55 minutes sketch. <clears throat> Wonderful, graceful turn, and we want to emphasize that through our cross contouring turns and move that around. You know, cross contour that back of where I had it there. <clears throat> cross contour that sternocleidomastoid, uh, excuse me, the erector spinae. I'm talking about the neck, it's like about the back. Picking up that charcoal stick again to work further the background. Kind of refine all these parts a little bit. Where I need to. 
So what am I trying to do back here? I'm just trying to emphasize the figure with the complexity of the background, simplifying where I can, add where I can, darken where I can, lighten in where I can, but don't overemphasize anything in that background beyond the figure. Uh, the figure needs to stand out first and foremost as it interacts with this study. So I'm working the folds there on the ground between the feet are fun. It's stretching of the cloth a little bit. So he's really digging into that right foot quite hard. Lighten up here a little. This right outside part of this foot where the cloth is just to separate that further. So it's a balancing act between drawing what you see, analyze what you, what you see, and uh, omitting quite a bit of what you don't need. And how do you know to do that? Time and experience. Mentoring. Hopefully these videos will help you do that. Looking at a lot of art historical references, that's why I have the art history and drawing series that I'll be adding to for probably years to come that hopefully will help you, energize you to go look at these artists further, the ones you really want to explore, and to be able to recognize them. When you do go to museums, you see them like, oh, I see Tintoretto, I know who Tiepolo is, or Uccello, or, or Pantormo, Ghiberte, those kinds of artists, and, and others, more contemporary, etc., and so that you'll be able to have a fluid and fluent conversation and also with your work and have conversations within your, your working methodology uh, as you develop your technique and style. And maybe one day you'll be making your own videos and your own, you'll be a professor or teach some, at some level somewhere in the world to others individually or to groups, however that works out for you. So I've got that big charcoal stick, but it's deceptive because I'm using a finer edge, almost like a charcoal pencil. And then I can just subtly change the, the hold on it and the angle of it and get a more uh, a stronger, broader line too. Just tinkering with edge and value and movement around the model. Just using these last moments to tweak and change and soften up edges or harden an edge or go darker. Now remember at the back of the video, right after this video is over, I've got four images of the poses of this pose. One that's about the same level that you're looking at now and then three that are close-ups of different areas to help you out a little bit further. Give you a little bit more more viewing viewing attributes. The name of the game is practice. Lots of practice. Spend a lot of time. The more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it, but it takes a while. You're going to have to be patient and and get your drawing mileage in. You've heard, you probably heard me say that if you've if you uh, watched a lot of these videos, but it really is true. It's certainly not a, it's not certainly not a, um, an empty, an empty kind of uh, conversation. It's a real, real, real live kind of conversation. Getting that drawing time in. Now 
that's about it. I've got about a couple of more minutes left on the on the film. I'm gonna let it run. I'm gonna I'm gonna step out and let you watch the rest of it. I certainly hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, there'll be certainly more, and this will be if you're watching earlier than later, it'll be earlier. But there'll be several long pose videos of different techniques and, and media that I'll that I'll post, and you can uh, add this one to the collection. I uh, wish you well, and I hope you good luck with it. And uh, do it more than once, and then do your own as well. All right, take care, everybody out there. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.